Welcome everybody to the stand-up meeting uh, for the 8th of March uh, for FPGA development at ORI. And what we'll do is talk about what we've been doing, uh, what we have coming up planned for the future, if there's any roadblocks that we have, and if there's any resources needed. And uh, please, Andre, you have the floor. Um, yeah, so I, I've been um, helping um, Everest to get the, the Pluto going. Um, like he, he's taking the lead and, you know, trying um, to integrate stuff. Um, so it, it I think we got to a point where, so there was timing issues, I think, caused by Vivado, uh, but um, on a different version, I think it works. Um, so he managed to generate a bit stream and, you know, the, all the firmware to uh, program the Pluto, uh, but there is no data coming out of the encoder, which is sort of expected because um, the encoder now expects like a very specific, like the, the input data has to have the baseband frame size exactly, otherwise stuff get out of sync. Um, so yeah, what I plan to do is just add uh, like a trimmer slash pedder at the input. So if you say in uh, one byte with, I don't know, short frame configuration, like code rate one fourth, for example, whatever, it will pad this to, uh, I don't remember the, lengthening bytes and if you say send a frame that ex exceeds this the baseband frame by a bit it, it will cut into frames ju just to make it easier to integrate and, and test stuff and that's basically my plan oh wow well okay that's that's plenty um yeah and please continue to to update on Slack and reach out for help, however we can get it working. I can see that there's a lot going on. And um, you have a talk coming up uh, on the at Ham Expo, 12th, 13th. Uh, we're really yeah. looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. I, I expect to hear uh, a lot of people will be very happy about it. There's been a lot of interest every time that we post about it. So coming up. Cool. <laughs> yeah, looking forward as well. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right. Hello there, Anshul. You have the floor. Hey, so yes. Uh, now, closer to uh, getting end-to-end -end communication working. Uh, kernel, uh, I have been able to build kernel, uh, separate device tree. Now, I just want to build boot.bin, and then I should be able to go uh, and do the testing on actual real hardware. Uh, uh, there were some bl few blockers, uh, but that have been resolved. Few issues uh, on the way. Um, the details are on the Slack. So it looks all good to me. Yeah. Wow, thank you. That's uh, tremendous. Yeah, Any anything you need, just of course speak up. And we're sure. really looking forward to the end-to-end -end happening. I think it yeah. would be fantastic to get it done by Ham Expo, um, mm -hmm. but uh, that that is coming up very quickly. So let's just keep working, working on it. Um, yeah. And the, the real next, uh, oppor the real next best opportunity for, for any sort of demo, mm -hmm. uh, Ham Expo is okay, but as a virtual event, um, mm -hmm. it actually is kind of hard to demonstrate something mm -hmm. it, on a screen because, um, you know, an in-person demo is, is in general, a lot, a lot mm -hmm. more exciting and that'll be DEF CON. And that's much later in the summer. So it seems like it's far away, but we're already mm -hmm. uh, starting to plan. We'll definitely have a space yeah. and equipment there. So we're going to okay. be, be able to take part or maybe all of the lab to, to DEF CON and show off. If we were able to show off an end-to-end -end demo there with, um, with things working, I think that would be uh, fantastic. So, awesome. Right. And when is this DEF CON? Oh, um, let me make sure. Just, just a rough idea because I'm planning to travel to US. So if I can be in time for that. Oh, yeah. That would be, that would be really helpful. Let's see. DEF CON 30 is going to be August 11th through the 14th, and it's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. Perfect.
Yeah, and if, right. if not that, if that doesn't work out with your mm -hmm. schedule, then then we will figure out uh, something fun to do if you would like. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. so we can fill in uh, however yeah. your schedule works out. But yeah, August Perfect. 11th through the 14th, we'll be in uh, RF Village, Radio Frequency Village. We'll have mm -hmm. uh, a groups in Ham Radio Village and possibly mm -hmm. hard, Hardware Hacking Village as well. So there's plenty of mm -hmm. things to do and show off. Perfect, sounds good. So yes, um, during my compilation and as I was working, I can see all the ADI drivers, all the JESD drivers in the kernel, uh, separate device tree, That's all, that also looks good. So, and right now it's just um, an example from ADI, uh, hardware example, and this kernel working together and getting the radio out. And after that, the next major step will be uh, to integrate this DVBS2 IP. So, Fantastic. Yeah, the next step. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. I see Everest has joined the call. And uh, please, you have the floor. I do not hear any audio yet, but I see that you are not muted. Yeah, no audio. Yeah, is it better? Oh, yes, that's wonderful. OK, um, so quick update. But uh, some, I think, a good uh, advance. Uh, so uh, I succeeded in uh, compiling uh, and implement the DVBS2 uh, for the Pluto. So with uh, different uh, rock around, which means that uh, we have to use the Vivado 2020.1 uh, with some uh, tricks. Uh, well, because the 2019.1 uh, make a seg fault. Um, so the design is uh, now Okay, well, it is compiled uh, without timing issue. Uh, thanks to Andre to uh, to pass some time to try to debug. Um, and now there is a firmware which is uh, well. Uh, I I, um, I make some modification on the make file and some script on the ADI. Uh, to chain, and then uh, we have now firmware. So with uh, the uh, with uh, the binar binary uh, with uh, with the FPGA binary and all the Linux stuff. So the next step is to uh, try to. Uh, Debug all that, and uh, it's a good uh, thing to know that there is a G tag uh, on the Pluto. Uh, and I think that uh, Andre who, uh, could have some uh, uh, some work to do with Chai. Uh, so back to you. Thank you so much. That sounds like a fantastic amount of progress. And uh, so speaking of the Pluto on JTAG, uh, Paul, you have the floor. OK, well, we put Pluto, put JTAG on the Pluto. Uh, we went ahead and bought the approved hardware for that, uh, which is uh, two modules, one that has the interface actually on it and the other that just hooks the pins up right. Um, and that works. At least it identifies itself as, uh, as JTAG and has the, the necessary targets. So I look forward to people uh, reporting on whether that actually works and can make it uh, do anything useful. That's about all that's been going on. There's, there's been some problems with networking that I've been messing with for Ever East, and he's just reported a problem with seg faults due to memory map. And I don't know what that's about yet. So that I don't even know what, whether it's a blocker or not, but that'll be for the next little while. Is that the same seg fault as we're having with Vivado with the 2019.1? 
No, 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 no. It's uh, on the Linux compilation uh, uh, on the well, the, the step on Linux compilation. Uh, there is uh, there is an issue there because I, I'd like to have a complete uh, uh, building environment on Kerapi uh, instead of my machine. Uh, and uh, right now I am stopped with uh, with this. So I just see that uh, some guys have some the same problem when they use uh, VirtualBox, but uh, I just uh, try to uh, study the, the issue. Okay, Paul, is that something you can help with? That remains to be seen. <laughs> well, I sure hope so. The uh... Yeah, the whole the goal of, of having a really powerful computer is that it's a really powerful computer and does not seg fault on people. So we'll uh, we'll get right on it, see what we can do to fix it. I can help you uh, just share the details with me. I have worked on development of VirtualBox and also kernel, so might be helpful here. Yeah, thank you. That will Thanks. do not want it to be annoying uh, to people. That's the opposite of what we, what we want. But uh, since we are doing some interesting things. Uh, we will have problems from time to time. Sure. Okay, and I have a, a report about um, trying to use, trying to get a MATLAB based workflow for us. Uh, so we do have the, to, we have MATLAB installed on Karapi. It seems to be working, which is good. And the, all of the toolboxes are available. So the, if you run MATLAB on, on Karapi, and I believe it also Paul explained it to me that I think it may also run on ChacoCat, but it is uh, licensed through the MATLAB startup program, which means uh, so full professional toolbox. The, the ones that we were not able to get, including HDL coder, GPU coder, uh, MATLAB coder, which is for general purpose processors, and I believe the LTE toolbox. So if you want to look at LTE, I believe that that's now available. So all of that is is available, and and I was at least I was able to to fire up MATLAB and run a Simulink um, script that operated the Pluto. So we are we are able to connect hardware to to MATLAB, and then the goal is to go from MATLAB scripts all the way to HDL, so that we can produce HDL code uh, from from MATLAB, and this should improve accessibility to to being able to get things on FPGAs. So uh, this is has a steep learning curve. The HDL coder toolbox is not considered to be an easy, straightforward toolbox by MATLAB. Uh, and so far, I, I haven't dove into that uh, real hard. We do have the, the M17 encoder in a MATLAB script from Fred Harris, and he is working on a decoder as well. And that's going to be the first real MATLAB script that we try. Uh, but in order to, to use this, another nice thing about the startup license is that there's training available. So uh, I'm, I think we should take advantage of it and I'll, I'll get the word out as, as fast as I can. In the meantime, there are some, 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 some webinars coming, coming right up. For example, uh, there's one today that's about connecting hardware to MATLAB using Simulink. And I already know the basics of this, but I'm going to go to the webinar and write up a, a, a memo about it. So if there's anything in there that, that is in addition to what we already know how to do in terms of basics of running hardware from MATLAB, then, then you'll be hearing about it in another couple of hours. On April 5th, uh, there's a communications in space with MATLAB that is a, a webinar. Um, and it's it looks like it's right up our alley, so uh, that's that's something that that I'm going to sit through and write a memo about. And then there's an optimized FPGA and ASIC speed and area using HDL coder. So this is a targeted webinar about a particular aspect of the HDL coder, which allows you to to do some of the tuning for speed and area. That's on March 22nd. Anyone can sign up for these. They're off of the training site on, on at MathWorks, um, and you know, so so I will at the very least sit through them, write a memo. But if anybody else wants to to do this, uh, then or sign up for anything at, at MATLAB, any of the free webinars, please go go right ahead. The more, more people that see it, the better. If you're interested in this particular aspect, and that's mainly what I 
have planned for the future. Um, yeah, that's going to spread out over the next couple of weeks. So what so I'm trying to do is is open up the the toolboxes for us. We have a a year on this particular license, um, and I'm not sh entirely sure. I believe that we can renew it if it turns out to be uh, something that that really helps us achieve. Uh, technical goals, then we may want to consider uh, spending the money to, to renew it for two years. Uh, but it, at the very least, a year is what we have on, on this particular uh, access. All right, and that's it. The, the, um, I think the, the biggest blocker or the biggest area of concern is, is just making sure that, the, um, that we are able to transmit over the air and to solve all of the different tool flow problems. This in many cases is, is, can be a very frustrating part of getting things working. Um, but I think we've made huge progress. It seems that we're, we're not stuck. It's uh, slower than I think that we would like in order to get things working over the air. But that goal, once it's met, once we kind of get a good grip on, on the order of operations, which version of, of what tool, whether or not a custom tackle script is needed, those sorts of things, once they get sorted out, um, will make this much less uh, friction experience. All right, that's all I got. Any questions, requests, comments? Not from me, no. Cool, okay. I will see you all on Slack. Thank you so much. This is uh, such a fantastic a uh, bunch of progress, and it's it's really an honor to to work with such smart uh, and wonderful people. So, looking forward to next week. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks. You bet. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh,